This is the Juice Man 2 Video Operations Guide. Coming up, you'll see assembly and disassembly, a juicing demonstration, cleaning the machine, and product information. I'm Jay Cordage, the Juice Man. I want to take this opportunity to thank you for your purchase of what I believe to be the very best juice extractor on the market today. I hope you're excited about making fresh juices in your own kitchen. That's the only way to optimum health. Now this tape is your video instructional manual. We'll show you how to use your juicer, how to clean the machine, and I'll also point out tips and suggestions that I've learned over the years to help you get the most out of your new Juice Man juicer. When you first take your juicer out of the shipping or packing box, uh, I want you to take it all apart and rinse the upper pieces out just with, with warm water. You don't have to use soapy water. That's a simple way to do it. That's because people handle your juicer when they assemble it at the factory, and uh, it's a good idea. Now, one thing I want to emphasize, always unplug the machine when you're assembling or disassembling the machine. It's just a safety valve that you want to take a little extra precaution with. So unplug it. Now, I've just taken the, and unplugged the juice machine. It's assembled, and I want to show you how it assembles and how it, you take it apart. Now, the plunger, or pusher, if you will, <clears throat> is not packaged in the box. It's packaged in, uh, separately. So when you unwrap it, you just place it in here. That's where it belongs. And the first thing I want to emphasize is when you're making juices, this is quite important, only push the food to where your fingers hit the top of this hopper or well, if you will, just to the top. And let the pusher do the rest of it to push the, the whatever food through the cutting blades for juice extraction. So you push the food to here, and then take the plunger or pusher, if you will, push it the rest away. Push the food to here. I can't emphasize that. Never stick your fingers in that opening. Always use the pusher to do the work. Now, when you take the juicer apart, it's very easily done. You turn it clockwise to dismantle. All these pieces, you turn clockwise. And we'll show you that in a minute. Now, when you turn it clockwise, it's just about a, 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 a sixteenth of a turn, and then the cover picks right up. It's very simple. Now, don't forget to give all these pieces a rinse. Now, here's your juice bowl. This is the thing that does the work. There's a drive shaft. Um, what you want to do to remove both pieces, again, turn it clockwise. And there's a, there's a thing that we created, a little rise, that when you turn this bowl, it'll kick the blade right out. You'd, so you don't need a wrench or a locking nut or threading unit. You just simply, watch how it goes, now this is easy, just simply removes that, that blade. And then take the blade from underneath with your finger, just push up from the bottom up. And there's your cutting blade cartridge. It's very easy. Now when you put the juicer back together, here's your motor mount. There are three little cutouts here. There's one here, one space in here, and one space on the other side. Now, on the bowl itself, you'll find three little prongs that protrude. And when you place the cover on, just drop, just drop the, the prongs in the little cutouts on the motor mount. And then you turn, and it's gonna lock it. Now you turn, you turn the juice bowl counterclockwise, and you'll hear this lock in place. Hear that? Now, this is important. This is important how you seat this cartridge. Don't merely just drop the basket in place. You have to seat it flat, okay? The best way, some people do this. Let me show you. Some people take and push this way. Well, you're bending unevenly on either side. The best way, I find, to be by crooking your forefinger and taking your thumb and expanding it, placing the thumb on one side of the cutter and the forefinger on the other side, and with equal pressure, press down with that blade. Just press it down and seat it in its proper position, just like that. The top of the blade basket cannot be above the top of the juice bowl. If it is, you will need to remove the juice bowl and reassemble. Operation of the juicer with the blade basket misinstalled may cause the cutter blade to grind against the feeder tube on the juicer cover. Nothing to it. Then you take your cover, and lock it in place. We have a receptacle that's packaged in the box that tucks up underneath the ejection spout. 
thusly. And I would advise that you put a little plastic bag because if all the pulp shoots in here, then you have an extra chore of picking up the pulp with your hand and having to rinse everything. So just tuck, tuck the, the basket under with a bag inside, a plastic grocery bag, and then therefore you can merely pick up the bag and throw it out when it gets filled up. Now, what I want to show you now that the juicer's all assembled, the pusher's in place, we're going to plug this in because I want to show you a very unique feature that we have and we've incorporated in our juice machine. The machine can never be turned on unless the cover and all the pieces are in the secured proper positions. So I want to show you that. Um, by turning on the switch, there's a little switch on the, button you, on the bottom that you press in. And we'll turn the machine on, and as I turn it on, I'm going to unscrew the cover after the machine picks up momentum, and you will notice how the machine turns off just like that. Now you'll notice, now I'm going to turn the cover clockwise and unclamp it. Now you'll notice how that machine stops. That machine is absolutely stopped because we have a feature, a safety valve feature in here that does not permit the machine to be turned on until the cover is fastened and secured. Now we'll turn, with the machine on, the switch on, I'm gonna put the cover back on and the machine will automatically go on because the switch is in. It's that much. Now we're going to show you how to operate the machine and make some of the juices. But first of all, we wholeheartedly recommend that you go out of your way to buy organic produce. By that we mean produce that has not been sprayed and hasn't been grown with chemical fertilizers. All natural. However, if, if you do buy store-bought produce and you don't understand the seriousness or consequences of it, we recommend wholeheartedly that you use our liquid pesticide remover. And more about that a little later. In the meantime, uh, when, we're doing, when we're doing carrots, and carrots, of course, are the basics to every vegetable recipe you can possibly imagine. Now, as you push the carrot through, very lightly, the, ba the blade will take care of, of doing all the cutting. You just guide it through, and as I stressed, uh, just push the food down to the opening of the hopper or the well and let the plunger do the rest of it, you see? Now, when you're doing things like leafy greens, let me explain something to you. You never drink leafy green juice straight. It's just too concentrated, which will explain in some of our other videos. And when you're doing the leafy greens, usually you're going to mix other things with it, primarily carrot. So what I do when I do parsley, spinach, uh, and it, cabbage leaves or what or, uh, sprouts of any kind. I don't push it down with a plunger to get optimum juice out. We let the carrot juice wash the hard to get juice from leafy greens through that screen. And that's the way you would do a leafy green into juice. And when you get to doing leafy greens like uh, the leaves of romaine lettuce or the loose outside leaves of cabbage, uh, merely take them off of the head and then fold them up thusly so they'll fit through the opening. And then again, to get the optimum amount of juice through that screen into your glass or cup, you always want to push down with a carrot. And the carrot juice will wash that hard to get leafy green juice through that screen into your glass. So what we'll do, we'll push the romaine lettuce in, and we'll take the carrots and use them as your plunger or pusher, if you will. You'll see the green juice come through as the carrot juice washes that green chlorophyll through through the, uh, the screen into your glass. Now when you do an orange, uh, you're gonna take an orange, a nice size orange, and with our opening being large, you're gonna be able to cut that orange right down the middle. I'll show you just, just how to do that. I've taken an orange and cut it right down the center, the length of that orange. And then when you turn the machine on, you place the orange inside. You see how large that opening is? To take a half of a large orange and just simply put it down. And this is the variance on that machine. It won't bog down, it won't burn out. We, we've, we've designed it especially, uh, specifically to, to, to give it longevity. Now that's the juice of two oranges. Very, very simply done. The way you, you, you take a melon is to cut it into a large ring, about an inch or inch and a half, and then cut it into strips. 
So you can insert that strip through the, the well of the juicer opening. And what you do is you take the melon, and I want you to be aware of another thing. I want you to be aware of, of the sound of our machine, how when you're putting things that are a little rough skinned and very abrasive, how that machine will pick up and stay at a constant rather than bog down. And that's quite, quite important. That'll keep your juicer from prematurely wearing out, you see? When you're doing berries, particularly some strawberries are pretty large, and most of them, and they can fit through that hopper or, the, or the, the, the well pretty easily. But when you're doing little things like the little cranberries and blueberries and some of the things of the such, uh, when you drop them in, uh, the minute they hit that very fast spinning blade, they could pop out. So what I suggest to you all is to hold the plunger right over that opening so when a berry goes in, you can pl plunge it in, and even if it does kick back up on you, you have it smothered, you see, very easily. So this is the way to do berry juices. Now you can take a handful of berries and just push them in there and then smash them all down at one time. Now this is one of my favorite drinks, and that's strawberry and, and apple juice. I would say four, five, six strawberries and a couple of apples, and you've got one of the best tasting drinks that's in our repertoire, you see. Because of the power needed to produce the best juice possible, your juicer may sometimes vibrate. Feeding another piece of fruit or vegetable will enable the juicer to correct itself. Or if the blade basket is dry, pulp may stick to one side, thus throwing the basket out of alignment. Simply disassemble the juicer, scoop the excess pulp off the blade basket, rinse it lightly with water, and reassemble. Now what I want to do, now that we've completed most of these drinks, I want to take the juicer apart, but I want to show you how to clean the machine. Now always remember, first of all, you have to clockwise turn the cover off. Underneath the cover, you always take your hand, and where all this especially soft pulp collects, don't ever let that rinse down your drain pipes because you'll clog them up. So what I suggest to all of you is to reach inside when you go to clean your juicer and reach inside and take that pulp out of there and drop it back in that receptacle, that exterior receptacle. Now you can take that and give it a rinsing under a faucet. And what I want you to do when you take the juicer apart to go clean is to turn again clockwise and this bowl will actually, by turning it, kick up the basket so there's no struggle to removing the, the cutting blade apparatus. Now, we're going to take you over there and show you how easily this juicer is clean. Follow me. Now, there are only four parts of the juicer. First part, of course, is the plunger or pusher, if you will. And what you must do, I, I like to clean this just with my hands when the spray of the water is hitting it. Uh, I don't even use a brush for this piece. Place it over here along the side. Now on the inside, if you'll notice, the inside or underneath the cover, if you will, is very simple. And just to give you a better look at it, just take your hands and kind of wipe it. I, I don't even use a washcloth. I just kind of take my fingertips and wipe all the little openings up. Uh, most juicers have little channels and crevices where pieces of particles get locked in and they become really, in essence, unremovable, you see? So I like to just go ahead and do this with my hand, kind of wipe all the pulp off of here. It's very simple, very easy. Now here's the juice bowl, and what I do, there's a little pulp that collects in a channel here. I let the faucet spray the force of it get in here and rinse out these pieces and particles. And with my hand, again, I just kind of rub it. Very simple, very easy, nothing to do. Probably takes about eight or ten seconds and place it aside. Now, I would like all of you to purchase a vegetable brush similar to this with uh, little bristles on it. Uh, it just happens to fit the contour of our straining basket. And what I generally do, I take a few swipes inside with this, like that, and then I start rotating the basket with my hand. At the same time, put the bristles in this opening channel here. As I rotate, as you can see, I'm rotating it around, and I just brush very, very lightly, make one revolution or so around, just that simple. And then when I come around that first revolution, a few little swipes like that, and she's all done. 
Now I want to show you how to assemble, just to refresh your memory. Um, when you put the pieces together, after you wash the juicer, what I never do is wipe it with a cloth. I just let it air dry. Now remember what I showed you early on, these little, little protrusions go in that little gap, twist it counterclockwise. There's your basket all rinsed, brushed down, water still in it. Take my thumb and forefinger, push it down. There's your cover, and you lock it in place. Once again, I want to call your attention to the receptacle. This is where all the pulp shot into. Now, you have a choice to either use a plastic bag, and uh, so you can just very simply remove the waste matter, or you can use, at your discretion, uh, the juice machine without putting a plastic bag. And then when you dump the pulp out in the trash or in the garden, then you simply take and rinse this part out. It's that simple. We hope that this tape has answered most of your questions about the operation of your Juice Man Juice Extractor. We want you to get the best use out of your machine and make juicing as easy as possible. You know, I want to express to you my sincere wish that you will begin to use your new Juice Man Juice Extractor on a daily basis. Knowledge is only the first step, my friends. You must now put that knowledge to use in your daily life. That's the only way for you to experience the power of fresh raw juices. You all know it helped me, and it may help you. Good luck, and the best of health and happiness to all of you. In addition to this video operations guide, we offer a complete line of nutritional products and educational materials. To receive our latest product information, call 1-800-800-8455 or write to The Juice Man, 655 South Orcas, Suite 220, Seattle, Washington, 98108.